This belt begins here on the arm of the extruder cart, travels around the pulley on the motor, comes out under here, goes across and around the idler pulley on the other side, and then connects to this belt tensioner. Whenever the motor moves, the extruder cart will now travel because it's connected to the belt. You need the longest of the GT2 belts, one belt tensioner, and the two 40 millimeter M3 screws. The belt is gonna make a loop. The key thing to remember is that the teeth should always be on the inside of this loop. Those teeth actually will grip onto the GT2 pulley attached to the motor. Feed the belt through that top slit. Remember the teeth should be facing down towards the middle. Go all the way through to see the belt come out the other side. It's gonna make it much easier to then grip it, loop it around and feed it back through the bottom slit. So if you can see, I'm just looping it around on the other side. Now I'm just going to kind of fish around until I get it through that bottom slit. Now I don't want a whole lot of slack on the bottom, so I'm going to pull most of the slack back through the top and give myself just a little bit of overhang here. Double check that the belt is flat to the back of the little slit. It is possible to accidentally hook one of the screws under the bearing clamp, so double check that yours looks the way you see here. You need to zip tie the belt in place, but you also want to make sure that the teeth actually mesh together when you go to zip tie it. So see how those teeth are interlocking, that's what you're aiming for. You also want to make sure that the actual square of the zip tie is up here on the side where the motor will mount to the extruder cart. So to ensure that it's there, I find it's best to feed this through from the top, loop this around, and then catch the top of that zip tie there. And then gently get this into place so that square stays on top of the belt. You want this zip tie to be as close to the slit as possible. Here's a close up of that zip tie. You can see it's on top of the belt, but it's also resting almost off to the side of the belt. It's important that you have it off to the side. It should be the side closest to you because that way it rides directly in front of the rod clamp when you push this piece over to the end stop. The zip tie needs to be tight enough that it's pinching the belt like you see here. Hold on to the extruder cart with one hand and then pull the belt with the other. You shouldn't be able to pull the belt through that zip tie at all. If the zip tie is good, go ahead and clip off the excess. Next, you're going to feed the belt in from the top, going around the pulley attached to the motor. Take the end of the belt and pull it through. This is going over top of the end stop and wires. Notice that the belt goes under the rod clamp and wraps around the pulley. If yours doesn't go under the clamp or wrap around the pulley, fix it now. There's a big pocket of air underneath this bearing clamp. Feed the belt right through that big opening. Notice the belt is floating between the screws of the bearing clamp. Pull the belt straight and it should not touch the rod clamp or the end stop. Wrap the belt around the idler pulley. The belt now makes a complete loop and the teeth are on the inside. The last stop for the belt will be this tensioner. This tensioner is held in place with two M3 40 millimeter screws and they pass through this arm here. Send those two screws through these holes on the arm. Here you can see the screws on the other side. That gives you an idea of the depth of where the belt tensioner will be attached. Before I screw this in place, I want to feed the belt through it. So feed the belt through the side with the little feet, in through the top, and then out again through the bottom. Now the tough part here is how much slack am I going to pull through here and then zip tie in place. Well, I want to make sure that I have my belt pulled taut, so make sure there's no slack on the line and they get an idea, based on those screws, how much slack you need to pull through here. Just a word of caution, you don't want to tie off the tensioner so far away that it's difficult to attach it to the screws. You can see that my depth is about the full thickness of the tensioner minus those little feet. The reason why I did this is it's plenty of room for me to grip the screws, but also there's plenty of room for me to continue to tighten it to increase the tension of the belt. The first zip tie, I wanted the block above the belt. Now I want the block to be below the belt. So I'm going to feed this through on the side that I want the block to end up. And I'm just going to work that zip tie down until I have it in place. Now the tricky part here is again, I want to make sure that the zip tie is as close to the end of the belt as possible. So I'm really pushing it up close to that tensioner. Here's a close up of that zip tie. You can see the teeth mesh together and the belt is pinched just lightly by that zip tie. Before I screw and place the belt tensioner, I want to check that the belt isn't caught on anything. It should pass freely under this bar clamp, wrap around the pulley on the motor, pass over this end stop and over this bar clamp, pass under the bearing clamp, pass over this bar clamp and around the idler pulley. 
If it doesn't have any obstructions and I can pull it tight, I'm ready to attach it to those screws. Although all I need to do is tighten the screws into the tensioner, it is a little tricky because the space is tight here to actually fit an Allen wrench, so I'm just going to get them started using my fingertips. Once the tensioner is started, I can then tighten it with the Allen wrench. I can only really do these sort of half turns by putting the Allen wrench in the screw and turning it a little bit at a time. So although the belt tensioner is in place, there's still a couple steps left to go. I want to make sure that the belt is properly tightened. I have a little bit of give, but not a lot. On the longer side, it is very obvious to see that give. On the shorter ends, it's a lot less noticeable. You can kind of pluck at it and listen to see what kind of sound you get. As you tighten it, the pitch goes up. I don't worry about it having an extremely high pitch, particularly because this is a very long belt, but I do want to make sure that it has some kind of tone because if there's no tone or it's very flat, then it's way too loose. When the belt is properly tightened, I'm ready to go ahead and clip this zip tie. I do want to check by uh, pulling on the belt here that it's not coming free of that zip tie. If that zip tie is properly tightened, I can go ahead and clip it free now. I also need to clip the excess belt off of here. Now the question is, how much belt do I want to clip? Well, if I push this all the way to the left, you can see how the belt gets bunched up there. I only really need to clip about half of this away, whereas the other side, I'll need to actually clip almost all of it away. So I clipped off the excess that I don't need. Now I'm going to push it to the other side. And I can see that this one, wow, it's really, really no room at all for that excess belt. So I'm going to pull this away and clip almost all of it. The reason why I'm clipping almost all of it is that it's actually kind of a hazard here that you won't be able to hit your end stop if there's too much belt here. So now that I've clipped it very, very close, I hit the end stop without any problems. The side with the end stop can be really tricky. So take a look here at almost touching the end stop. You can see where that belt is going to actually ride above where the Delrin Acme nut is located. And if I don't have that clip properly, it won't make it all the way. See how it goes all the way over and touches that end stop? You need to replicate exactly what you see here. You may be wondering, why not clip this excess belt completely away? Well, I left it here for a reason. If this belt ever isn't tight enough, and I can't tighten the tensioner anymore to get it tight enough, I can undo the tensioner, take off this zip tie, pull the belt through some more, and then re-zip tie this. That way I can increase the tension because now I have something I can pull. If I cut this completely away and I ever wanted to redo the zip tie, I run out of space to pull it through again. This is your last step to check that everything is in place. The best thing to do here is to slide it all the way to the left, see that that excess belt doesn't touch the either pulley, slide it all the way to the right, and you should be able to reach that end stop. If everything looks good, you're ready to move on.